explains that. And every column of C is, a, is some combination of the columns of A. And it's these numbers in here that tell me what combination it is. Do, do you see that? That, that, out, that in that answer C, I'm seeing stuff that's, col that's combinations of these columns. Now, suppose I look at it, that's two ways now. The third way is look at it by rows. So now let me change to row. Okay. So now I can think of a row of A, a, a row of A multiplying all these rows here and producing a row of the product. So this row takes a combination of these rows, and that's the answer. So these rows of C are combinations of what? Of, tell me how to finish that. The rows of C, when I, when I, I have a matrix B, it's got its rows, and I multiply by A. And what does that do? It mixes the rows up, it makes, it creates combinations of the rows of B, thanks. Rows of B. That's what I wanted to see. That this, that this answer, I can see where the pieces are coming from. The rows in the answer are coming as combinations of these rows. The columns in the answer are coming as combinations of, the, of those columns. And now that, so that's three ways. Now you can say, okay, what's the fourth way? The fourth way, so that's, now we've got like the regular way, the column way, the row way, and what's left? Uh, the, the one that I can, uh, I, I want to tell you about, well, one way is columns times rows. What happens? If I multiply, so th this was row times column, it gave a number. Okay, now I want to ask you about column times row. What does, if I multiply a column of A times a row of B, what shape am I ending up with? So if I take a column times a row, that's definitely different from taking a row times a column. So a column of A was, what, what's the shape of a column of A? M by 1. A column of A is, is a column. It's got M entries and one column. And what's a row of B? It's got one row and P column. So what's the shape, what do I get if I multiply a column by a row? I get a big matrix. I get a full-size matrix. If I multiply a column by a row, I get, shall we just do one? Let me take the, the column 2, 3, 4 times the row 1, 6. That is a, that product there, I mean, I'm just following the rules of matrix multiplication. Those rules are just looking like kind of petite, kind of small, because the, the rows here are so short and the columns there are so short, but they're the same length, one inch. So what's the answer? What's the answer if I do two, three, four times one, six, just for practice? Well, what's the first row of the answer? Two, twelve. And the second row of the answer is three, eighteen. And the third row of the answer is 424. Actually, what am I, I mean, that's a very special matrix there. Very special matrix. What can you tell me about its columns, the columns of that matrix? They're multiples of this guy, right? 
They're multiples of that one, which follows our rule. We said that the columns of the answer were combinations, but there's only, to take a combination of one guy, it's just a multiple. The rows of the answer, what can you tell me about those three rows? They're all multiples of this row. They're all multiples of one sixth, as we expect. But I'm getting a full size matrix. And now, just to complete this thought, if I have, uh, now let me write down the fourth way. AB is a sum of columns of A times rows of B. So that, for example, if my, if my matrix was 2, 3, 4, and then had another column, say 7, 8, 9, and my matrix here has, say, started with 1, 6, and then had another column like 0, 0, then here's the fourth way, okay? I've got two columns there, I've got two rows there. So the beautiful rule is, seeing the whole thing by columns and rows, is that I can take the first column times the first row and add the second column times the second row. So that's the fourth way that, that uh, I can take columns times rows, first column times first row, second column times second row, and add. Actually, what will I get? What will the answer be for that matrix multiplication? Well, this one is just going to give a zero, so in fact, I'm back to this. That's the answer for that matrix multiplication. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of like happy to put up here these facts about matrix multiplication because it gives me a chance to write down special matrices like this. Th this is a special matrix. Uh, all those rows lie on the same line. All those rows lie on the line through 1, 6. If I draw a picture of all these row vectors, they're all the same direction. If I draw a picture of these two column vectors, they're in the same direction. Later, I would use this language. Not too much later, either. I would say the row space, which is like all the combinations of the rows, is just a line for this matrix. The row space is the line through the vector 1, 6. All the rows lie on that line. And the column space is also a line. All the columns lie on the line through the vector 2, 3, 4. So this is like a really minimal matrix. And it's because of these ones. OK, so that's a third way. Now, even, yeah, I, I, can I, will you, will you take, it, it, this is, I, I want to say one more thing about matrix multiplication while we're on the subject. And it's this. You could also multiply, you could also cut the matrix into blocks and do the multiplication by blocks. Yeah, that, that's actually so uh, useful that I, that I want to uh, mention it. Block multiplication. So I could take my matrix A and I could chop it up like maybe just for simplicity, let me chop it into two, into four square blocks. Suppose it's square. Let's just take a nice case. And B, suppose it's square also. Same size. So these sizes don't have to be the same. What they have to do is match properly. Here they certainly will match. So he here's the rule for block multiplication. That if this has blocks like uh, uh, A, so maybe A1, A2, A3, A4 are the blocks here. And these blocks are B1, B2, B3, and B4. Then the answer, 
I can find block. I can find that block. And if you tell me what's in that block, then I'm going to be quiet about matrix multiplication for the rest.